Revelations chapter 2, verse 1 says, To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tasted tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. And all that sounds good. Verse 4 says, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first and you, or else you've left your first love. Consider how far you have fallen Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practice of the Nicolosians, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. You can do all the great and wonderful things, but if you have, do not have your first love for God, it, it all goes along the wayside. There's so many people sitting in the house of God who have lost their first love, and they think they're all right, and they think they're going to go to heaven, but that's not true. And God's really drawing us back to the cross. He's been doing that for quite some time. Are you? Is your heart so hard that you can't find the cross even though God has given you space, given you time? Tonight you really need to search your hearts. Where am I really at with God? Have I hardened my heart to the point where I'm not going to make it? God's been telling us for a couple years now we need to become intimate with him. That we need to draw close to him. In fact, go up into the third heaven with him so that we can endure the things that's coming our way. You know, we, I cannot get the body of Christ to understand that we are in one of the biggest warfares we ever been the church has ever been in, and the body of Christ does not want to believe that of all the stuff that's coming down the road, but that doesn't make it null and void. It is coming. The hardships. Are you going to make it? The only way you're going to make it is, you're, is if you're living so close to God. And he's told us this, that so, people can't tell where you end and God begins or vice versa. I was, you know, this is a different service. I've, I've really labored with this. I didn't, you know, and God said, you've never been this way before, and I haven't. I didn't feel the... Um, the freedom in the atmosphere that should have been here. I didn't feel uh, people really believing what they saw. Jesus really went through that and more. That was just a mild form of what he really went through. And how I can't understand how anybody that claims to love Jesus can sit in the house of God or anywhere and watch a video like that and still sin. That bothers me a whole lot. And what do you think it does to the father that his son Jesus went through that and the church itself won't change? God's really calling us to change tonight. You know, somebody said to me, you know, somebody said, I'd really love to have a job. And somebody said something to me the other day that makes a whole lot of sense. You know, in order for you to have a job, you have to get have be able to pass a drug test. And they said, you know, they don't really want the job or they quit their drugs. So they pass a drug test. So true. 
And that, that's just one little thing. There's so many things. Uh, I think his name was Zeta, the, the, the person who died, went to heaven and, you know, was going around telling all the different things. And God kept taking him to heaven and finally put a video out where he had a sin that even though he went to heaven, it was still there when he came back. And that sin nature was still there no matter how many churches he visited, how often that he told his testimony. And one day he decided he was wanted that sin nature going. So he did what he had to do. He fasted and he prayed. I think he went into a room by himself and fasted and prayed. And when he came out, that sin nature was gone. See, if you really want something bad enough, you'll do what it really takes to get it. Are you understanding this? And, you know, you say, oh, use me, Lord, use me. I see God use a lot of people who are in sin. I've seen it ever since I got born again in 77. And I said, but God, they're, they're doing all these miracles. And he said, but they're not mine. He said, when they received me as their Lord and Savior, I gave them these gifts and I'd never take them back. And even though you're in sin, the miracles will still operate in your life. But that does not give you a seat in heaven. And you young kids in here, where you really don't want to come to church and, and you know what right living is and you know what wrong living is, but still you choose the dark side. And I have a hard time with that with young kids. Come on, you young kids think you're so smart doing the dark side. I don't mind telling you that you're doing wrong, right? And you know, we want healings. And God is going to release the healing in the houses of God once again. I don't want you to blame yourself while you're not healed. In God's perfect timing, he will heal you. And don't believe, don't think, well, I must be doing this wrong. You know what you're doing. I don't care what you say to me. You know what you're doing. You know whether or not you're living right for God or not. And if you're living right for God and you're, and you're still sick, then don't allow anybody else to tell you that there has to be a sin nature in you causing you to be sick. But if you know you have a sin nature, then God is saying to you, get right. Get right. All these songs tonight, you know, I had a different song service. God had me change it and have these songs. Every one of these songs should have spoken to your spirit man they should have changed you from the inside out they should have done a perfect work in you where you will love the father with all of your heart you know one song says i, I love you so much you know, i got my hands to the her ceiling whatever it said how many people raised your hands to the ceiling you you know what i mean or was you just singing a song do you ever really listen to the words that you sing? I keep telling you to, but do you really listen to the words that you sing? Maybe that's why you don't like slow praise and worship, you know, because there's really not enough gung-ho in it, and you just can't get up there and jump around and carry on, and you don't have to pay attention to the words that you're singing. I don't know where you're at tonight. But I do know God's dealing with this church. He's dealing with your hearts. And I told some, I told the other people that, on the staff that not, when I come in, I said, I don't know what God's going to do tonight. I only have four pages at 20 font. I don't know what God's going to do. I've been laboring with this since Monday. So whatever God does, he does. And whatever you allow him to do, he'll do. And whatever you don't want, he won't give to you. This night is a night I know right now that it's up to you whether or not God blesses you and God give, or God allows you to walk into the, the calling that he has upon your life. It's up to you. We need to quit playing church, church. And we need to be about the Father's business. You need to look at the streets. You need to look and see what's happening to our children. And I'm, I'm not even sorry, but you know what? 
as far as I'm concerned, it's the parents' fault that we're having what we're having today because this generation that had these children weren't right. They weren't serving God. And they, we were just sitting around letting, letting the devil do whatever he wanted to do, saying, no, oh, that's none of my business. It was your business, but you didn't tend to your business. And now we have a group of young people who are really, really, really messed up. But you know what, young people, you're not going to be able to hold that before God says, it's my parents' fault. No, it's not. Because you know what? You you can make it right. You can get yourself together, and, and then you can go out there, and you can change the world. You really can go out there and change the world. But do you really want to? Or is this just some facade, you know, pretense that you put on? trying to make people believe you're something you're not. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're around people who really walk in the spirit, they know what you're, what the truth is about you. They know whether or not you really want God because God will speak to the people's walking in the spirit and he'll let the people around, he'll let them know what the people around about them are really wanting out of life. I'm, I'm believing that I would wish that all your hearts were changed tonight, but I don't believe they are. Uh, but I believe that some of you did let, allow the uh, last three songs get into your spirit and change the way you think. And maybe you'll get before God and, and tell God you truly do want him. That you're tired of what, you, what the devil's been doing with you all your life. And you know, I was sitting there saying, oh, God, let the miracles flow. Let, just let the people's hearts be, be made soft again. Did it happen? I don't know. I don't know. I only know one thing. I can't do any more than what I'm doing. It's up to each one of you individually what you allow the Holy Spirit to do to you. This church is going to be held accountable for a lot of things because we all know that the Holy Spirit's here every service. And we all see people's lives change. We've seen angels. We've seen it all. But you still look around you still see people still in sin. What do you think that's doing to the Father's heart? What do you think it's doing to the people around about you? You say, well, I go to church. Why aren't you changing? You know, and everybody talks about the trafficking of children. What are you doing about it? Are you truly walking holy before the Father? You know, are you really truly in a place with God where what you pray changes the Father's heart or unties his hands so he can do what needs to be done? There's too many people on these programs, and Women's the Glow is the same thing. You're on the program just to be seen and heard. You're really not following God the way you ought to make a difference. Come on. Now, I didn't say that about you. Uh, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? What are you going to do tomorrow if you drop dead? Where are you going to go? You know, that's something that each one of you need to think about because the Word of God tells me that you have to work out your salvation. How? Daily. Once saved, always saved is not true. Not true. You know, just like we read about that church one day, I was right there where Alan was sitting and I was preaching. And God said, Daughter, if you don't get out of doubt and unbelief, I'm going to remove your lampstand. And I was preaching the word. He was, you know, using me to preach the word, but he spoke that to me. I went home and got up my face and I said, God, whatever it is I'm doing wrong in doubt and unbelief, I want you to take it right now. I don't want to lose my lampstand. How many of you realize that if you don't quit, your lampstand's going to be given to somebody else? Your mantle's going to be given to somebody else? Are you, are you understanding this? I hope you do understand it because you know what? We don't have much longer to do this. Because God said he's shaking the church. is really super hard right now. And then when he's done, he's done. Where will you be standing when he's finished? 
He's spoken many wonderful words over you. And just like I told somebody the other service, I know you're all, I know you're still in sin. Even though God told you all these wonderful things, I know you're still in sin. But see, God, God sees you where he, how he's made you. And even though you're in sin, he tells you all these wonderful things to you to encourage you to let go of the sin nature in your life and move forward to what he's telling you that you are. But too many people take that as, oh, okay, I can still sin. But rem always remember Samson. He thought he could always sin too. And one time he got up and shook his hair and he had no strength and he was killed. Well, his eyes were gouged out. He went into prison. They made fun of him and, you know, all that went on. But eventually he died. So are you another Samson? Are you thinking, Phew, I got away with that today. And then you do it again. Phew, got away with that. God didn't strike me dead yet. He might have walked away from you, though. Right? Even though he didn't strike you dead, he could have walked away from you. He's going to let you go ahead and sin to your heart's content. Then one day you'll go to hell. I had a dream the other night, and all I saw was hell. People screaming. The fire is raging, and the people screaming. And God was crying. He said, I never meant for this to happen. Where do you want to spend eternity? You're the one that may, is making that decision every second of every day. Are you listening here tonight? This truly is, you know, I, I didn't know what God was doing, but I, I, we know now that it is an altar call. And some of you didn't answer the altar call. And he's saying, I'm vying for your heart. Will you give it to me? Will you really give it, give me your heart, Chris Gore? Will you really give him all of your heart finally? Will you just quit holding back that little bit for yourself, the self-satisfaction? You, you, God's calling on you. You need to give it all to him, every bit of it. You know, what does the Bible say? Woe unto those who cause the, the little children to stumble. You know, you're all children. And if I'm doing something wrong, I cause you to stumble. Woe unto me. Are you understanding that? All right, we have, you know, we have parents here who have children. They're in sin and their children are watching them. And their children are wanting them to be better, but they're not. But they're finally saying, well, that's just who they are. I, I, that, uh, that upsets me. Why should your child have to look at you and say, when you're in sin, say, well, that's just who they are. We're parents, right? And we should be an example of Jesus Christ. One day you'll stand before God and you wish you would have changed because you're going to pay the price for causing others to stumble and not really serve God the way they wanted to. Put the, uh, is that the word up there, in, uh, Brett? This is the word that God gave me for tonight. This is a good word. But it's for those who gave their heart, who gives their heart totally and completely to God. God said, the mountains that have loomed before you will be like molehills. You shall destroy the molehills with just one word, and that word is Jesus. There is still power in that name and his precious blood. Use that name continuously and watch the mountains disappear before your eyes. You are the conquering ones. You are the ones who have been sent forth to destroy all darkness. You are the ones that have surrendered your all to me. I am, I am as always with you, no matter the battle. You know, God's really talking to this church. Heaven has been instructed to stand at attention and deliver you from all evil. Up to now, your walk with me has been a painstaking task. But from now on, this will be a walk of complete joy, no matter the path I place your feet upon. A multitude stands at full attention to come to your aid at any given second. Call upon heaven and watch its response. This is mountain moving time. And this is a time when victory shall reign in the camp of the soul winners. This is a season of reaping. Everything is in place. And the harvesters are anointed to bring in this harvest of ravished souls. There are so many in the valley of decision. It is their season for complete freedom. 
There is nothing like unto this army I have produced and brought forth. You went from coward to giant slayer and are ready to take on all that hell produces. You, your lack of interest in the latter days produced nothing. I now have your full attention, undivided attention, which will produce the greatest harvest of souls in church history. Does he have your undivided attention right now with everything he's went on here tonight? What's he say? Your lack of interest in the latter days, you know, before tonight, produced nothing. I now have your full undivided attention, which will produce the greatest harvest of souls in church history. Every era has its uniqueness. This era is a mass producing salvation upon salvation. These souls will never return from whence they came. They do not desire bondage ever again. They are going full throttle into the abyss and saving the tormented souls out of the clutches of hell. And I was going to write that scripture for God. God said we will pull them right out of the very throes of hell, these lost souls. Are you one of those? Are you really one of those? Is your life so drastically changed that when you go to speak to somebody who is in sin, though, what would you have? Or are you still partially like the world? Still delving into a little bit of sin here and there. Still allowing your flesh to come forth and satisfying it. Mystery after mystery will be unveiled in this given dispensation of time. No more shadows, only complete light. Just as I called beloved John to come up hither and I revealed my mysteries to him, I'm doing the very same thing to this generation of believers. That is what God gave for this church tonight. How long has he been calling us to come up hither, church? Way too long. And we have not answered that call to its fullest. We're still dabbling around the edges. And it's going to cost us our salvation. You know... You, you don't have to believe anything I say to you, but everything that God tells us is right in the scriptures. And I usually always write the scriptures down, but I didn't tonight because God didn't instruct me to. He wants you to take him at his word. And he wants you to really be take him very serious tonight and quit playing around the edges. It's either total salvation or no salvation. I don't care what you did up till tonight. God set the stage for you to give your all to him. He wants you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. You know, I look at some of, some of these young kids here tonight, and, you know, I really just want to slap you. You have been raised in Christian homes. You know all about Jesus, but yet at right now you've chosen the dark side. Why? Why? You have to ask yourself that question. Why does the dark side pull me so hard that I would give up my salvation and go to hell for a little bit of pleasure? And really, truly, if you who walk in the Spirit look at people who are having pleasure, you see they're really not enjoying life at all. They are totally, completely miserable. But they're trying to con convince themselves that they're happy, and so they're trying to convince you, and it doesn't work. And God is pulling at your heartstrings tonight. He wants all of you tonight, every last bit of you. And he doesn't want you to do, give it, give your all to him tonight and then walk out of here and, and then go back into the world. He doesn't want that. I want you to know one thing right now. Right now he knows your heart. He knows whether or not you want him all the way. You know, and I was sitting there and I saw God, I wished I could lay down on the floor. I would be a leader and I'd go to that pulpit, I mean that altar, hoping that others would follow because that's what God used to have me do before I was a preacher. He'd have me always go to the altar when they had the altar call. 
And I said, God, I'm not even in sin. He said, but somebody has to lead my people. I didn't see any leader come up here tonight and sit at the altar. So that makes me wonder, where are you at? Where are you at? Are you see what I'm saying? Somebody has to lead. And somebody, you, oh, I want, I want you to use me to do this, Lord, Lord, use me to do that, Lord. But you don't lead. He can't use you until you're totally, completely surrendered to him. Are you ready, God is saying, are you ready to surrender you all to me tonight? And that young lady with you, Donna, you need to understand, honey, that God loves you. He has your healing already manifested in heavenly places. And he wants you just to know that you know that you know that your healing is going to be manifested. And he doesn't want you to waver back and forth. Well, I'm always going to be like this. And, you know, is God ever going to heal me? He's already healed you. Now start trusting him. Start trusting him. I was telling the people that, you know, I was really, really sick the other night. And I was praying and I couldn't sleep and I was praying. And um, all of a sudden God showed you know, the white wall with the word gratitude on it. And it, it was there all night long. You know, we have to be grateful for what God is, where we're at right now with God, you and know, healing or whatever. And then as we thank him for where we're at right now, then he'll do the miracle that we need. And God said, you're stuck in a place that he doesn't want you to be stuck in, in your walk with him. And tonight he's done a new thing within your heart. And you're going to find yourself thinking differently, talking differently. I'm not saying you're lost, but there's just things that God has taken you to a, a higher height than what you were before you walked through the doors. And I was sitting there talking to them back there. And I heard you say, well, somebody told me miracles are happening. So I thought I'd come. And I said, God, meet her right where she's at. Meet her tonight. Meet her faith. And I know God did. I know he did a great and a powerful works within you. Now, if you're a friend of Donna's, Donna, you watch and see how she changes. I don't want you to talk her into changing. You just, it'll manifest itself. All right. I'm hearing God say, come as you are right now. The altar's open and God is saying, come as you are right now. He doesn't want this pretend thing tonight. He wants total commitment.